here's the best part. The door, the front door of the freak bus was a stripper's booty. So when the door opened, it was like a stripper booty opened. And then this strippers walking out of a stripper. And I'm 20 years old and I'm standing there and I'm just like, yeah. Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. Now, tonight's episode, it's not for the faint of heart. In fact, you might even want to cover your ears. Because tonight, it's about to get filthy, dirty, maybe just a little birdie. It's about to be freaky, nasty, gonna make you want to touch yourself. I'm talking about smut, talking about sluts, talking about putting stuff in your butts. It's gonna get icky, tricky, it's about to get a little sticky. If you think you can't play ball, stick around, it's about to go down. Let's talk about from his work on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, Roy Wood Jr. <laughs> College, if nothing else, is an opportunity for you to experience other cultures. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham in the 90s was very black and white. There wasn't a lot of diversity in the city. So when I went to college in Tallahassee, this was my first time experiencing all these different cultures and foods and people. And music was the one thing that I really got my nose open to, man, because I thought it was just, you know, Southern rap. I thought it was just outcast and, you know, a little bit of NWA, and, you know. And I got to college, and my roommate, Kuda, my homeboy, he put me on the Wu-Tang Clan. Right. It was dope. I go, who are these dudes? Why do they think they ninjas? Who are they? <laughs> That's what I thought Wu-Tang was. Just a bunch of niggas who think they Shaolin ninjas, huh? <laughs> yeah. But the most moving music I got exposed to while I was in college was Miami bass. Miami bass music was amazing. Hands down, Luther Campbell of Two Live Crew is the most important rapper in the history of the genre. Matter of fact, I'll double down on that. Luther Campbell of Two Live Crew, the most important musician of the last 30 years. Period. Last 30 years. Luther Campbell, Two Live Crew. All they did was make songs about sex. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Every song, sex. They had song titles like Pop That Coochie. Yeah. Me So Horny. Yeah. Throw the Dick. <laughs> Doo-doo Brown. I don't know what that one meant. <laughs> but the music was rhythmic, and it was just... And you could always hear a girl in the background of every Miami bass song. <laughs> I don't know if it was sex or singing, but you could hear it in the bass. Oh, my God, the bass. The base of this music, man. This is this is what originated white people. This is the stuff that was shaking your car when a cutlass would pass by you <laughs> in 1993, with a booming ass system, with that Miami bass shit rattling the trunk. Luther Campbell's music was so obscene that record store owners were arrested for selling it. That's how crazy it was back in the day. So Luther Campbell decided to be a little, you know, he decided, you know, you know what, I got an idea to keep these shop owners from getting in trouble. I'm gonna label my albums so that people know that it's vulgar. He created what we know today as the parental advisory sticker. He created that. Nobody else. 
They still arrested him for obscenity for performing hit songs such as Throw That Dick. <laughs> and pop that coochie. <laughs> but he was the only one that was getting arrested that had the guts to take the government head on, man. This dude took the government head on and won. He won, and because of that, any performer that you can name right now, the only reason you can buy their shit like a regular fucking American is because Luther Campbell fought for the First Amendment to be able to say whatever the hell he wanted to say on a song. <laughs> And he said a lot of freaky stuff. <laughs> he had a van. I don't even know how to describe this, but he was a pioneer of promotion as well. And any, any rap group that you see now that has a van with all of the logos wrapped and all the design, Luther Campbell did it first. And they had a freak van. That's what it was called. It was called Luke's Freak Van. And the two live crew van, you'd be outside a nightclub at two o'clock in the morning and you could hear this van coming from around the corner <laughs> with that booming ass bass subwoofer, the license plate rattling in the <laughs> And you'd go outside and you'd see this van turn the corner and it had the neon lights on the bottom. It had neon lights on the top. It was like one of them Scooby-Doo kidnap vans. <laughs> but it had partitions. There were plexiglass partitions in the back part of the van where you could look inside the glass and inside the glass is a woman just shaking her ass. <laughs> I'm 18 years old and there is a van cruising by with half-naked women just popping their ass and I did what any 18-year-old would have done. I chased this van <laughs> all the way up West Tennessee Street. I'm running alongside the Luke Freak van, trying to get a glimpse. That's what Luke dancers were about, man. Luke dancers, they were like the SEAL Team 6 of stripping. I don't know how, to, how else to describe them, but it was just amazing stuff. And that was, that was, that was a lot of my, my teenage years in college was going to Luke shows and just watching all of this debauchery unfold on stage. So imagine my delight, a couple years later, I'm interning at a radio station and my boss comes up, he goes, hey, uh, I'm having a bachelor party if you wanna, you know, come here, it's a bachelor party. I go, well, man, I'm 20, I, you, you cool with me? Come here, man, I don't care if you're 20, just come on. It's gonna be Luke dances. <laughs> the Grinch-like smile that came over <laughs> my face when I found out I had an opportunity to be in the same building as the Luke dancers. So I go to this party. Not only do I go to this party, I iron clothes. I iron an outfit like I was gonna impress a Luke dancer with a crease in my khakis. Well, hello. Hello, Miss Hip Hop Stripper. How are you doing? So I go to this bachelor party and I'm sitting in the corner, and I don't know if you ever been to a bachelor party before the strippers get there, but it's very awkward. It's very awkward. It's 20, 30 men just all sitting there, and they just <laughs> And they got their wands in their hands. It's like the DMV, but freakier. It's just <laughs> Nobody's talking to each other. And then off in the distance, we hear it. <laughs> and we all light up. Everybody in the room lit up, like when you see your daddy's headlights break through the blinds. Because you know he's taking you to the fair this time. He didn't lie. He actually showed up like he promised. I'm sorry, did I open up too much right there? Was that... We hear the music of the Luke van coming. We all rush outside. And what bends the corner is not a van, but a Bus. This motherfucker had a freak bus. A huge charter bus comes rolling down the street. Blah, 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 blah. Neon 
neon lights and his strobes and his sparkles. It's 10 o'clock at night in a residential neighborhood. <laughs> and there is a stripper house rolling down the street. Here's the best part, here's the best part. He had all the graphics and stuff painted. He had two live crew on the front and you had women like this, but the door, the front door of the freak bus was a stripper's booty. So when the door opened, it was like a stripper booty opened and then there's people walking out of a stripper booty. It's strippers walking out of a stripper. And I'm 20 years old and I'm standing there and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> What happens over the next two hours changed me. <laughs> Not only did it change me, it ruined strip clubs. I ain't been to a strip club but two times since. Like, it's, it ain't worth it. I saw SEAL Team 6. I, I, <laughs> we, get in the, we get back in the house and they're taking, I don't even know how to describe this tastefully, but fucking, they was just there, uh, ice cubes, and they just tossing ice cubes. <laughs> and then another woman would catch the ice cube and then she would toss the ice cube like some hot potato. You ever seen the globe trotters? <laughs> they pass it. You've seen the globe trotters before. They you come out in the room and oh my God, man. They taking alcohol and they pouring alcohol and they lighting and it's flaming titties and they dancing. <laughs> they dancing with flaming nipples and you gotta remember, this is 1997. This is still dial-up porn. So I've never <laughs> seen any of this. My only imagery of naked women is like Playboy and scrambled porn, UHF. <laughs> One of them pulled out a pack of cigarettes. One of the strippers pulled out a pack of cigarettes and I'm watching this and I'm like, ma'am, what is gonna happen with the cigarette? And she smoked the cigarette. She smoked a cigarette. She gave herself cervical cancer. Like, I don't know how she, she, she smoked a cigarette. And I didn't have any one, so I had to play the outside. So I'm just observing. <laughs> and it's weird when you're in the midst of something that chaotic, you can see all the calm points in the room. And just over the, the flaming titties, like just over them, <laughs> there's a man, and I can't really make him out from that distance, but there's a man and he's sitting there and he's reading a Wall Street Journal. I'm like, how can somebody be reading Wall Street Journal? <laughs> they smoking cigarettes. How are you <laughs> reading this Wall Street Journal? So I inch closer to this man and I get a little closer and I can make him out now. It's Luther Campbell. And I'm trying to figure out what to say to this guy, what to say to this man that's done so much for me at this point. Because <laughs> this is the same man who went all the way to the Supreme Court and he won. He legitimately changed the face of not only music, but comedy. And you see that from across the room and it's easy, it's very easy to put people in one box, you know? But it's not fair, because we can be many things. Is Luther Campbell a man that built his career on some music that a lot of people would consider disrespectful and misogynistic to women? Absolutely, you can make that argument. But you can also make the argument that he was one of the most important legal trailblazers in entertainment in the last three decades. You can be both things. And I'm trying to figure out how to put that into the shortest sentence possible because I don't want to interrupt this man and I, I really want to get back to the flaming titties. <laughs> and I creep over to this man and I'm trying to figure out what to say and before I could open my mouth, Luther Campbell lowers his Wall Street Journal, looks me dead in the eyes and goes, you're welcome. <laughs> Roy 
Soviet Union. Thank you, guys.